ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am Orwa Usopp, and I am back with more Edna and Harvey. Hello, hello. The hooded figure sat silently at the campfire. Strange. I can't remember him being in the adventure. Which source book does he come from? The different narrator threw me off for a second. I forgot. <gasps> it's My goodness. King. What's it? Adrian. We have here, then, a little barbarian warrioress. Uh huh. Somebody's playing with pixel. Great anger in you. Could it be that the thirst for battle sits in this little chest? Totally. Uh huh. She's Let a rager. Me give you some advice. Swallow it. The most successful battle is the one that doesn't even have to be fought. Well, that's some actual so wisdom be there. A good little barbarian warrioress and take a nap. Bite me. Lilligrim could hardly believe her ears. Wasn't this a fantasy role-playing game? What fun was there in imagining aimlessly sitting around a campfire? Lilligrim didn't dream of listening to the soothing advice of the mysterious NPC. If anything, it just made her angrier. Too bad that she had to stop herself from losing control. Yes. She would have loved to have screamed this dope's head off. All right. Let's head to the Goblin Gorge. Potato King. Well, well. Is that the legendary army of Hothmortigal? A little girl with braids? <laughs> Fabulous. Oh. Why so angry, little girl? You're not here to declare war. Yes, I am. Are you? It would almost make a pleasant distraction, putting your feet up and drinking tea all the time. In the long run, it's not good for my goblin army. But why should I sound the horn for battle? My because... scouts told me about your lazy companion. You can't possibly think you can defeat my army with those dopes. I hardly think so. As long as we are not being attacked, I'll stick to the advice of this friendly traveler. Okay. Wait and see and drink tea. <gasps> Lilligrim Some was goblin. boiling with rage. She was very close to throwing a tantrum, but something was holding her back. Yes. Let's head back to camp. Safety kettle. You see a large cauldron. Roll for perception. You discover a safety valve. Safety valve, huh? Plug it with balls. Slowly walk Bulls. to it, then plug it with the balls. The ball was stuck, but the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. Well, we got logs, so let's throw them in the fire. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide, so Sadrugalot doesn't wake up. Done. The logs were in the fire. Yay! But child, what are you doing? Nothing. This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Shouldn't it wake them up? Without wanting to rush you, maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with the required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Yeah, whatever. Uh-uh. I really must insist you stop making that sound. Can't you see that you're threatening to destroy the idyllic calm? 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Okay, there. Problem solved. Are you happy? But that's to arms! They've declared war on us! Yes, we have! The horn. Their horn looks like a giant rape whistle. If that's the horn on the hill. It's apparently not, because... That sound... I have to... keep... calm. No. Enough! I can't take it anymore! This noise is driving me crazy. I'm losing control. Two arms. Uh oh, he lost his temper. And his head. And his head. Finally, the fun part of the role playing game began. The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lily Glee, who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins in Hoth Modigor. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. They have heads? It was a short battle. The goblins were powerless against the fury unleashed by the group. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted. Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily. He is a potato. Poor foolish Lily. That was a terrible mistake. Lilligrim was still wondering what he meant when she heard an ominous crack above her. Dun -dun -dun! The dam broke. And great, now we're dead. Drowned in pink water. No, I'm sure she's fine. Wake up. Come on. Wake up and swim. When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight. The Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snippo. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? She's freaking out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, I remember that one, too. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Kind of our fault. Her scream is adorable. How she felt at that moment. Do we get it, please oh, now? Well, who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl? That was awesome. Do you feel all right, little girl? Does she sound like she feels all right? Little girl. Hello. Mm, uh, are you okay? I was worried. You know. Am I crazy, or did it just get colder in here? I think you're crazy. Alright, let's go back to the role-playing room. <laughs> I have the hiccups. Role-playing round. Role-playing round. There we go. You? It's so depressing. I'm supposed to award experience points to improve a talent. Expressive dance, making music, lock picking. Go with expressive dance. I don't actually want to be able to do any of those things. Isn't there a talent such as accepting one's fate? No. Or assigning experience points without experiencing an existential crisis? Peter's dithering made Lily furious. Couldn't the notorious whiner make even the most basic decisions? Lily would have liked to smack him across the face, but something held her back. Something. Doing whatever we want, getting angry. <laughs> hmm. 
My phone made a ding. Schmack. Oh, he spit out a tooth. Oh. Jeez. Mm. You're right. I'll just increase pick locks, and that's it. There you go. There. Why don't you just hold on to the character sheet? I don't want anything to do with it anymore. Well, thank you. That was fun! You really have to play with us again sometime! Druggle Jug! Druggle Jug? You're certainly a brave warrioress. All of Hoth Motigor is in your debt! Alright. Back to the hallway. Woogie woogie. Oh great, I can't quick walk to Harvey. Nor can I speed through the woogie! 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 Yes. Woogie! Thank you. <laughs> twitch, twitch. All right. Coffee, Iron Gate. We can walk over here now. It takes a while for the screen to catch up. Lily was always happy when something was left over. But usually it was only breadcrumbs and bones and things like that. Free arrow. Score! Alright, back over to here. Where we have a character sheet that is not our own with the lock picking skill, but guess what? It works. It sounded crazy, but. She now actually had the skill to pick locks. Come on. Done. The gate was open. She Tama. wondered if... Tama! It was true. Yep. She'd opened the real gate during her trance. The path to the asylum's tower was now free. Somewhere in the dark uncertainty, there she would find her friend. Without really thinking about it, Lily took the stuffed rabbit with her. They if really she was don't going want you to, to enter Dr. Marcel's realm. She didn't want to do it alone, like she usually did. Yeah. All right. Lily was certain. This had to be the cell that Edna was being held in. Locked, no doubt. The door was firmly locked. Yes, it is. What an ugly boy. Why someone would put up a picture like that baffled Lily. I don't like it. Let's get rid of it. All right. Now the downside, we have a picture of Alfred Marcel on us, but hey. Do not disturb, huh? Free sign. Oh, she just takes it down. I don't care. Lily could stare at the moon for hours, but she didn't like it. Terrible things tended to happen. Okay. The door was firmly locked. Okay. Going to the storeroom. Eep! The Phantom looked depressed, Oh Lily noticed something else. Well, we did stab him in the eye. Healing. Was I'd that feel a little... the key to Edna's cell? I'd feel a little down if I got stabbed in the eye. Um... Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. I'm a hopeless case. Oh. Father was right. Who's yes, your father? You heard correctly. I'm Reuben, Dr. Marcel's secret second son. Gasp, but he gasp, gasp! Lily didn't know who Alfred was, but she still thought it was appropriate to catch her breath in shock. We were supposed to have the perfect upbringing. Pops thought traditional methods were inadequate. That's why he began developing his own, while Alfred responded to his practices. I developed conspicuous behavior. I was a failed experiment. 
Pops was so disappointed that he kept me in the asylum cellar, hidden from the outside world. Jeez. Alfred, on the other hand, was presented as a shining example of his parenting methods. This guy I sucks never worse had a and worse. To make him proud of me. Since Alfred died, everything just got worse. I'm invisible to him. A ghost, a bad dream. The strange circumstances surrounding Alfred's death showed him that childishness is a disease that needs to be eradicated. I should have died back then. If I could only see my brother one more time, I never got to say goodbye to him. Well, that's the way it happens sometimes. Hey, lunchbox. Somebody had left their lunchbox. That would never happen to Lily. She didn't have a lunchbox. Honey pancakes. Ooh, free bowling ball. And unfortunately, we can't talk to the brain this time around. Gimme. Here. Alright. Hang up the honey pancakes. Leave. Oh, wait. Forgot a little step, actually. Break the termite farm. How awkward. Lily had destroyed the termite farm. My bad. Then leave. Huh? Noteworthy. The termites scarfed all the pancakes and ate a hole through the door in the process. Nom nom nom. Hungry. Hungry little buggers. Alright, let's take the mirror we just got and put it on the door. Lily understood the principle of locks and keys, even if it sometimes appeared otherwise. Hook on the door, more specifically. Fine. There we go. Anal retentive! Alright. Uh, what am I doing? 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 Aha! I'm doing this. Take this big meatball and put it on the clothes rack. On top of the clothes rack, the bowling ball looked like a skull. But something was missing. Yes, it was. Lily shuddered. Suddenly, there was a ghost in the storeroom. <gasps> What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anybody's gonna do any haunting here, it's me. Beat it. If you see Alfred... <laughs> tell him to haunt round this way sometime. Oh. I never got to say goodbye to him. Does he have tears running down his bag? That's just sadder than sad. Alright, he's obviously got unresolved issues with his little brother. Poor guy. Let's help What's out. What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anyone's gonna be haunting around here, then... Wait, wait a minute. Alfred? Alfred, it's really you. The light puts the face I... on the ghost. I can't believe it. Oh, Alfred. I never got to say goodbye. <laughs> and I have so much I still want to tell you. Where to begin? Oh, yeah. I know. You lousy, dirty toad. <laughs> because of you, I've lived my whole life in a stinking sewer. Just you wait. Brotherly issues. Alright, we'll let them work it out. Meanwhile, we're gonna snag this key ring. Let's leave them to it. De -do, de -do, de -do, de -do, de -do. I can't go down the stairs. I can't even look at the stairs. That's just wrong. Edna's cell. Lenny! Oh, Whoa. thank goodness. We were so worried that they had gotten you, too. The doctor has completely lost his mind. He wants to turn us all into mindless puppets. Just look at what he's done to Mother Superior. Oh, hello, Lily. Nice to see you. But what are you doing here in the middle of the night? Did the other students make you do this? They are such naughty children. You, on the other hand, were always so good. So Damn right. Good. I'm sorry that I was always so strict with you. But now, thanks to Dr. Marcel, I'm a good child too. Come, Lily. Sit down. You can help me. 
Embroider the dolls for the doctor. Just ignore her. Please concentrate on finding a way to get us out of here. Okay. Have to split before the doctor. Ow. Uh oh. <laughs> I finally caught you. I was hoping you'd show up here. I can use all the help I can get to speed up production of my hypnosis doll. But I'm terrible Soon, at embroidery. I'll be delivering them across the entire world. And then, naughty children will become the stuff of fairy tales. Once I've subjected you to my improved hypnotherapy, nothing can stop me. <laughs> Alrighty. Needle. You must not use sharp objects. You must lick me. Needle. Lily hesitated. Usually she waited until Mother Superior was gone before she rummaged through the garbage. But Lily was running out of options. But what was that? Were they... Eyes? Ooh. Lily had an idea. She knew she couldn't sew very well, but maybe it was good enough to give Harvey back his old eyes. However, something was missing to implement this plan. Ball of yarn we've been carrying the whole time. Perfect. Lily now had a needle and thread. Needle and thread. Lily had an idea. Harvey's old eyes. She knew she couldn't sew very well, but maybe it was good enough to give Harvey back his old eyes. She made her first stitch. Yay! Lily hesitated. She'd often been told that she wasn't yes, very good. Yes, we've been over this. Thread. But what did she have to lose? She was just going to have Pudding? to chance it. What are you doing? Stop that. You're hurting me. You must not use sharp objects. You have. You. Have. No. Have to scratch my fuzzy butt. <laughs> yes! I can hardly believe it! I'm my old self! <laughs> Harvey? Is it really you? <laughs> and there's... there's Edna! Come on! Go, go, go! Let's set fire to something! And fly to the moon! Just so we can eat it up! Go for it, Lily! What are you waiting for? Let's tear this joint apart! Yippee! Alright. Um... You have to get us free, Lily. I think Mother Superior has a knife to cut the threads. Unfortunately, she can't use it while she's hypnotized. If only we could somehow get her out of her trance. Um, I'm so happy to see you, Lily. I'd give you a hug, but... Oh, well. This wool version of an H.R. Geiger nightmare is sort of restricting my movements. Can we postpone this touching reunion scene until later? First, we need a plan for how to get down from here. Your mama needs a plan. My mother has a plan. For example, to convey me a sense of reality. <sighs> What's your mother's plan? Oh, I forgot. You no longer have any parents. Jeez, what a dick. Oh, that's mean. Um... What? Oh, Lily is right. <sighs> we should concentrate on getting out of here. I agreed. <coughs> Twit. <coughs> Edna. Lily was trapped. You must not contradict the doll. Dr. Marcel was planning to go into mass production. The... Come, Lily. Sit down. You can help me. Embroider the dolls for the doctor. You know she's you horrible at it. Good little children. So good. It appeared that Mother Superior was under the influence of Dr. Marcel's hypnosis. That means she wouldn't be much help. Lily caught herself wishing the old, strict Mother Superior was back. Really? Well, we've only got one thing in our inventory. It... What the hell? Why did it skip over something? Oogie. 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 
Thank you.